Chapter nine, Sharon. Kaylee has the special ability to take anything she hears and twist it, torque it, mangle it for her own purposes. Like this honesty thing. Today, she straight out told Emily she'd outgrown her, told Blake he needed a tutor and pointed out the stain on Aviva's skirt. What? I was just being honest. I heard that sorry excuse for a jab spill out of her mouth way too many times. Sometimes that girl makes me want to scream. Henry, scene. Ms. Graham writes the following on the board. Being honest is not an excuse to be mean. Students brace themselves for a lecture. Ms. Graham perches on stool. What do you all think I mean by that statement? Points to her socks, which are decorated with frogs. Like, for example, what if I asked you all what you think about my socks? Students, raising hands. Ms. Graham, don't answer that quite yet. Because if you were honest, some of you would say that this pattern is too babyish for a teacher in a fifth grade classroom. Some of you would say that you don't like it. But I bet that most of you would stop yourselves and think that making a comment like that might hurt my feelings. Henry whispers to Kaylee. So if I ask you whether I'm the funniest, most entertaining seat partner ever, just be honest and admit that I'm growing on you. Kaylee scooches away. You're definitely the most irritating seat partner ever, and that's honest. Henry, modestly, thank you, I try. Ms. Graham, remember, you get to decide what kind of person you want to be. Let me ask you this. Are there any options that would protect my feelings and be truthful at the same time? Emily. Your socks are creative, Sharon, and colorful, Henry, and frog-tastic. Students laugh. Henry, they're frogalicious and froggerful. They're practically a frogorama. Ms. Graham, yes, that's a perfect way to both protect someone's feelings and be honest. Aviva, I really do like your socks. Several students laugh. Aviva, what, looks around. I do, blushes. Ms. Graham, thank you for sharing, Aviva. I like them too. Henry, me too. Aviva smiles at her feet. Emily, status, angry face. Dear Hope, I cannot believe Kaylee had the nerve to say she had outgrown me. Like I'm a pair of too tight pants? Well, guess what? I've outgrown her too. That being honest is not an excuse to be mean lecture was totally directed at Kaylee. I'm pretty sure everyone knew it. Everyone except maybe Kaylee? Clearly she has decided what kind of person she wants to be and that's a jerk. I decided that I forgive Miss Graham for not letting me change table groups. As awful as it is to be in Kaylee's class now, I can't imagine how it'd be if we were in the same table group. I hardly ever say this word, but I think I hate her and I definitely hate that she took Aviva away from me. I can't hate Aviva even when I try to. I just miss her. She practically let me move in with her for the first couple of weeks after the divorce. That was while dad packed his things and mom filled up the bathtub with tears. I can never forget that Aviva was there for me then. I'm glad Aviva spoke up about the socks. She loves anything about nature. When we studied snails in second grade, I swear she got obsessed. She thought snails were the cutest things ever. Seriously. She drew pictures of them to tape up all over her room. I remember crawling around in her backyard with empty spreadable butter containers. We poked holes with pencils in the lids. We picked up snails with our hands. Personally, I never thought snails were cute, not even the babies. I just acted like I did. I guess that's a lie too, kind of, but I was just trying to be a good friend. If Ms. Graham asked me, I'd say that's the kind of person I wanna be, a good friend. I wish things weren't so broken with Aviva these days. Maybe she's like one of those animals that change colors based on their environment. To camouflage themselves? Geckos and chameleons do that. And some frogs change their colors to avoid getting gobbled up by predators. Although I don't think Aviva wants to change. Maybe she thinks she has to morph herself to survive. Not that Kaylee would eat her up. Or would she? Love and luck, Emily. P.S. I've been eating lunch with Sharon almost every day. She's definitely growing on me. Sharon's like an anti-chameleon. She doesn't change for her environment even when she really should. Sometimes that makes her seem weird and sometimes that makes her seem cool. For sure it makes her reliable. Cecilia is nice too. When I'm with them both, I don't have to try to be fun or cheerful. I can just be me. 
Kaylee, dear Ms. Graham, you said we get to choose what kind of person we want to be. You're right. I choose to be the kind of person who stands up for what I believe. I know part of your being honest is not an excuse to be mean lecture was pointed at me, but sometimes people need to hear the truth. I say it like it is. My mother does too. She shares her opinion and if it makes people mad, well then, too bad for them. Speaking of which, I have to stand up for the privacy of our journals. Today I wrote Kai a note for his mailbox with my left hand to disguise my writing. Kai, you're a thief. I know you took someone else's journal. You're the reason for that whole honesty lecture. It was a pain. Anonymous. Ms. Graham, I don't know why I keep writing these journal entries to you. Since I'm pretty much not letting this journal out of my sight except at recess, I don't think you could possibly be reading it. But somehow it feels right to keep addressing it to you. Kai. Hey, frog! I got this note in my box today calling me a thief. And I thought, here we go. I'm not one to walk away from anything. And even though this whole journal thing was an honest mistake at first, I know I've got to own it. I tried to catch up with Blake today so I could explain, but I took too long gathering my homework folder and before I knew it, he was halfway down the street. I called to him a couple of times, but he had his earbuds in and I guess he was listening to music or something, so he didn't hear me. Then the dude walked so fast. I couldn't keep up and I was practically running. All of a sudden, he disappeared around a corner and in an okay neighborhood. Hmm? So maybe I'm wrong about all this. His journal made it look like he was really poor or something. Maybe he and his mom are renting a room. I guess the best thing is to be nice to the guy. Last year, our teacher read Wonder out loud to get us talking about being kind to each other, no matter what our differences are. I thought I'd hate it because I'm a fantasy and sci-fi guy. But when she got to that part where the kids and Augie are in the woods, I had to put my face down on my desk so no one would see me crying and think I was a wuss. And then I borrowed Wonder from the library and read it at home a whole mess of times. I don't know why I liked it so much. I guess it just makes me want to be a better person. P.S. I know Blake's really into Kermit. I could take him to visit my parents' university. There's a whole biology wing. I bet he'd love it. Blake. Working late, buy yourself dinner. Heart mom. Then Blake takes his sketch pad and crayons or pencils or chalk or something, pastels goes down to draw a frog, which I think he draws amazingly, but then like rips it up. Chapter 10, Henry. Scene, Ms. Graham loses her marbles. Ms. Graham, we'll be changing seats and table groups for the next two days while I try a new teaching technique. Students, half groan and half cheer. Henry, finally, now I can try my material on someone who'll actually crack a smile. Kaylee, Finally, now I can actually focus without being interrupted every three seconds. Ms. Graham, this will only be for two days, so don't get too excited or too upset. This morning, when I called you each up to my desk for an assessment, I asked if you could whistle. All those students who were given an orange sticker with the word whistler in black letters, please place this sticker on your shirt now. Students, rumbling. Ms. Graham, for the next two days, we'll call this group of high achievers the whistlers. At this time, I'd like all the whistlers to move their desks to the front of the room, and all the non-whistlers move your desk to the back of the room. Students, confused, rumbling. Ms. Graham, quiet, please. I know this seems strange, but new research is showing that on average, whistlers are capable of accessing a greater percentage of their brains. If I keep all the whistlers at the front of the room, maybe the non-whistlers can learn from them. We are trying to maximize learning here. Henry whispers. Uh, what? That makes zero sense. Neither I nor my sister can whistle, and we're Taiwanese. If some percentage of people use higher brain power, it's us Asians. We rule the world. Kaylee, shh. Henry whispers, no, seriously. You watch TV, right? Have you ever heard of an Asian who wasn't brilliant? Kaylee, you mean besides you? Henry, hey, that was funny. You're getting the hang of this. Kaylee, shut up. Plus, that's a stereotype anyway. You're being racist. Henry, I'm allowed to make jokes about my own minority group. Didn't you read the handbook? Aviva sometimes jokes about not eating bacon because she's Jewish, but I can't. It would be offensive if I did. You can joke about rich people. That's how it works. I'm allowed to joke about the superior intelligence of my people. Ms. Graham, Kaylee and Henry, please hold your conversation. 
Kaylee, I'm assuming you're explaining this concept to Henry, since it does sometimes take non-whistlers longer to understand. Henry whispers, is that a joke? Ms. Graham, non-whistlers will need more time on assignments, so I'll be releasing the whistlers first for recess and lunch and after school. Henry, what about people who can raise one eyebrow at a time? Raising right eyebrow. I bet we use a higher percentage of brain power too. Or how about people who can sneeze with their eyes open? Comedic pause. Because my neighbor can, for real. Ms. Graham, yelling. No one whistlers, focus! Sharon raises hand. Ms. Graham, Sharon, you'll have to wait. You're a non-whistler. I'm going to be taking questions from whistlers first. If you listen carefully, non-whistlers, your questions will be answered. Henry groans silently. Emily, status. Sad face with one tear. Dear Hope, I can't believe I was beginning to like Ms. Graham. I thought she actually cared about us, but apparently I was wrong. I'm a non-whistler and she's being so mean to us. I hid in the bathroom at recess to practice my whistling, but I can still only blow air. I hate it when I think people are cool and then they change up on me. It feels like a trick, like what Kaylee and Aviva have done to me. It doesn't help that they're both whistlers. Or like the birthday when I turned six and mom decided to go healthy and make me a watermelon cake. She seriously stuck candles in a slab of watermelon and thought I'd be happy. Or the divorce, for obvious reasons. But life does that to me all the time. Sticks its tongue out at me and wags it. You thought things were gonna be okay? Nope, just kidding. Life's gonna suck again. Discouraged, Emily. I can't even put on my fake happy face right now. Cecilia. Hola, abuelita. I'm so glad I have friends outside Ms. Graham's class. The other teachers aren't doing the whistler thing, thank goodness, so I can forget about this annoying classroom drama at lunch. I don't understand, Ms. Graham. Shouldn't she be pairing us up so the whistlers can help the non-whistlers learn? Some things are a mystery to me. Abuelita, guess what? I'm going to join a soccer team outside of school. Some of the girls who play at lunch are on a YMCA team. There are practices on Mondays and Wednesdays at 4.30 at Melbourne Park. Mommy doesn't get off work until five, but it's close enough to our apartment to walk. Can't wait to start. Today, I dove for a save in the high corner and I blocked it. Someday you've got to see me play goalie. Maybe Mommy can take a video on her phone and send it to you. Te extraño mucho. Words to practice. YMCA. Do you remember going there on weekends for their tiny top soccer, abuelita? Besos y abrazos, Cecilia. Kaylee, dear Ms. Graham, today you made me laugh. No offense, but you're a little batty for giving Whistler's first choice on everything. Although I agree that we needed more order in the classroom. And the whole take it to the class thing is a big time waster. Don't get me wrong, it's nice to have freedom and responsibilities and all that, but not everyone's as mature as I am. So I'm glad you came up with a system. It's simple. Whistler's rule, non-whistler's drool. You should observe our next recess though, so you can see how some of those non-whistlers are behaving. Like poor sports, just because they can't whistle. Sheesh. Blake. Oh, whistler's first at the water fountain. Whistler's only at the lunch table. Whistler's versus non-whistlers in PE. Uh-oh, a whistler tripping a non-whistler. Non-whistler down. Probably not happy about it. Sharon, sometimes I wonder why I always have to be the one to speak up. Does no one else have a voice? Does no one else see the unfairness? Does no one else notice the way the whistler stupidity pits kid against kid so easily? Although I guess when you look at history, which is by the way, the point, obviously, grown-ups have done much, much worse. If that's the point though, to show us what we can do to each other so easily, so quickly, then maybe it's best if I don't say a single thing at all. Aviva, date, October 18th. Am I the only one that thinks this Whistler thing is a metaphor? I mean, Ms. Graham has us reading The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank, and we're learning about segregation in history. The scary thing is how much everyone has gotten into it some of the boys started a water fountain fight at recess. I don't think Ms. Graham realizes how fast things can get out of control. I brought Kermit to sit with me at my desk today. I watched him breathe 
and that calmed me down and helped me think. Should I say something? I always get stressed about speaking up, like maybe I'm wrong or something. I usually just wait around and eventually someone says what I wanted to say. I guess I let someone else be my voice. Ms. Graham set up the class council. Now's the time to use it. We need to vote this Whistler thing away. This is uberly stressful. Maybe I should speak up now. Kai, hey frog, Kaylee's getting on my nerves. She thinks she's such hot stuff because she's a Whistler. Our teams are sort of rivals anyway, what with them stealing our first egg drop idea and all that tension between Emily and her. Girls are so mean to each other sometimes. And Kaylee's walking around like she's Draco Malfoy or some Percy Jackson demigod. Emily's been sniffling all morning and her eyes are lobster red. I'm done. Someone's got to say something. It might just have to be me. Kaylee. Dear Ms. Graham, I can't believe Kai. Who does he think he is cornering me like that? Talking so loud that half the school could hear? Well, I stayed totally calm. I told him in a very soft voice so only he could hear that I knew he'd stolen Blake's journal. So who was he to talk? That I could tell on him if I wanted to. That made him stop talking real fast. Sharon. Aviva surprised me today. She dropped a note into Ms. Graham's mailbox as she walked by. When we filed back in from recess, sweaty and breathing hard, Ms. Graham had taped the note squarely on the front of her desk. I would like to propose a new law, it read, that every student is treated equally. Aviva sat in her seat, her cheeks the color of pomegranates. I wanted to hug her. Why couldn't she own her idea? It was a good one. Still, I'm proud of her for speaking up and I'm proud of me for holding back just a little bit so she could be heard. Chapter 11. To my esteemed fifth grade students, Thank you for putting up with my Whistler experiment. Your class met the challenge faster than most. I was waiting for someone to point out the error of my ways. I'd like to make it clear that I've found zero scientific research about whistling relating to intelligence. I wanted to pick something completely meaningless and link it to preferential treatment. As you all know from our history lessons, people have not always been treated equally. Our task is to learn the lessons from our past so that we don't repeat the same mistakes and to speak up when we see an injustice. Current social issues will be the focus of our next unit. I expect you will all rise to the challenge. Before we begin, however, I believe we have some repair work to do. I would like each of you to write at least two letters to people in this class. I hope that this will build bridges. Please include at least one affirmation in each letter. An affirmation is something nice. For example, I'd like to affirm you all by saying that I appreciate you, your creative ideas, your distinct personalities, and the way you've embraced your class jobs and assignments. Sincerely, Ms. Graham. Dear Blake, do you want to hang out sometime? We could skateboard or something, or we could build something cool for the frog habitat. I think you're a great runner and artist. From Kai. Dear Kaylee, are we cool? So you know where I'm coming from. I don't like it when I see people get hurt feelings. Emily's all right. You all used to be friends, right? Seems like she shouldn't have to feel bad all the time. Your affirmation. I liked your relay race idea. From Kai. Dear Aviva, I really miss the way we used to hang out and laugh about stuff. I'm not sure what happened. You will always be one of my best friends. From Emily. Smiley face. Dear Ms. Graham, I love your frog decorations and I think you're a good teacher. Did you just happen to have all those frog decorations at home or are you buying them for our class? Did you like frogs before Kermit? I'm curious about this. From Emily, bigger smiley face. Dear Kai, yes, we can skateboard or build something for Kermit. That will be fun. Blake. Dear Kermit, I wish you could talk. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Affirmation. You're the most frogorific frog I've ever known. Henry. P.S. I made you a mailbox out of an empty tissue box. It seems only fair that you get letters too. Dear Kaylee, you run fast. Blake. Dear Blake, thank you. I am a fast runner. So are you. You are a good artist. I think you should take professional drawing classes. 
You had some good ideas for the egg off too, from Kaylee. Dear Kai, people don't have to stay friends with the same kids forever, you know. It's possible to move on. That's life. P.S. We need to talk. Dear Kaylee, when? Where? From Kai. Dear Kai, lunch recess. Tomorrow. From Kaylee. Dear Kaylee, a true comedian needs to be able to make anyone laugh. At first, you never smiled, not even with my best material. But now I get a smile like 25% of the time. My goal is to get it to 50% by the end of the year. Wish me luck. From Henry. Breathe. What do you think, Ms. Graham? Blake. Dear Emily, I'm sorry things have been so weird. I miss you too. From Aviva. Dear Henry, good luck. You'll need it if you think you're going to make me smile 50% of the time. You are funny, that's your affirmation, but in an irritating, itchy, bug bite way. I don't laugh because I'm trying not to encourage you. From Kaylee. Dear Emily, I've really liked eating lunch with you this year. You are one of those people who are always nice. From Sharon. Dear Blake, thank you for your drawing. It's perfect. I'd love it if you can sketch me a large one. Maybe on one of those extra poster boards? I'd like to hang it in the classroom as a reminder for everyone. Also, I just want you to know that I notice your kindness and caring for Kermit. I see you checking on the habitat, making sure there's clean water and food. Kermit appreciates you too. Sincerely, Ms. Graham. Dear Kai, how do you read so fast? Every time I turn around, you're reading another book. Also, you're brave to stand up to Kaylee. From Cecilia. Dear Blake, dude, you are the best artist ever in the history of the world. You're gonna be famous. When you're a millionaire, remember I said that. Of course, I'm gonna be a millionaire famous director too, so maybe we'll play golf or something. From Henry. Dear Henry, haha, <laughs> dude, can't wait to be rich, Blake. Dear Sharon, I can't believe we've been at the same school since kindergarten and we've been eating lunch together since September, but we haven't ever really gotten together outside of school. Maybe we can hang out sometime. From Emily, weird face with lopsided eyes and tongue sticking out. Dear Cecilia, my mom says I was born with a book in my hand. If you ever need a recommendation for a good read, let me know. From Kai, dear Emily, it's been a pleasure teaching you all, and thank you for your interest in my extensive and rapidly growing collection of frog posters, socks, figurines, earrings, and decorative coffee cups. They are all new purchases for me, although I prefer to buy gently used when I can. Now I've got a classroom theme. Can you stay after school today? I've been meaning to find a time to chat with you. Sincerely, Ms. Graham. Sharon, not that I'm counting, but I got one letter in my box today. I wrote six. Still, I have to say that Emily's letter is worth a thousand. Dear Emily, want to hang out on Friday after school? From Sharon. Emily, status, slightly unhappy face. Dear Hope, Ms. Graham freaked me out by having me stay after school, but all she wanted was to ask how things were going socially. Only what could I do? Tell Miss Graham what an awful person Kaylee had become? And about Aviva being a chameleon? No way. That would feel like tattling. So I just sort of shrugged and said this year has been different from what I thought, but that I was okay. She patted my back and just said, sometimes what we think we want doesn't wind up being what we actually want. It took me a moment to figure out what she meant, but then I got it. Exactly what happened with me and my table group. Now I'm glad I'm not sitting with Aviva and Kaylee. And she smiled and said her door was always open if I need to talk. And that was it. Love and luck, Emily. P.S. After Aviva and I sent letters to each other, I sort of thought things would change. But she's still not talking to me or hanging out with me at school. Maybe she only wants to be nice to me when Kaylee can't see? P.P.S. Sharon invited me over on Friday. I think I'll go. Why not? Kai. Hey, frog. I was stressing out when Kaylee confronted me about Blake's journal. I almost fessed up, but then I decided if I'm going to fess up, it should be to Blake, not to her. Plus, there's no way she could know I took it on purpose. But then the guilt got to me. I wanted to own this and I haven't yet, not really. I've got to find a way to make this right. Dear Blake, let's hang out at the park after school tomorrow. Bring your skateboard. 
I'm decorating the front of my journal with stripes because guess what? Our journals look exactly the same and I kept grabbing yours instead of mine. My bad, won't happen again. From Kai. After I finished Blake's note, I felt much better. I didn't make it sound like a big deal or anything and it really isn't. I can't wait to hang out. I'll stuff my backpack full of snacks. I've got homemade caramel corn and let him talk, take as much as he wants. Plus the park is huge and sort of woodsy. I bet we could gather stuff for our habitat. Blake, breathe, stick with it, keep up the good work. Nice, posters are up in the classroom. Huh, I like it. We are done.